Welcome. This is the Evolved Educator Podcast. Each episode, we talk about education and teaching. Our goal is for you to feel part of the community, and we want to learn from you, and we hope you learn something from us too. So welcome. Today, we're asking the question, how do some teachers wing it? I'm Chan Mi. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Michelle. So <laughs> when you're teaching, you know it's, an, it's important to consider content and instructional strategy, but the real indicator of effectiveness is students learning. Did the students learn? So, you know, I, I keep referring to this study for I don't know why for the past few weeks I've referred to it so many times. In the early 2000s, there was a study called Reading First. Mm -hmm. And in the study, I don't know if you remember it, but in the study, uh, the teachers used prescriptive language. And when I say that, I mean, they, it was they actually, the teachers were actually required to read scripted lessons to students only through direct instruction. Teachers were not allowed to adjust for any kind of diversity in learning at all. Right. You remember that? I do. I remember that. Uh, the data that came from that uh, Reading First study pointed really to a failed effort, and the Reading First did not raise the student achievement levels at all. Exactly. And in fact, it helped kind of begin to create sort of a generation of kids who struggled with reading and really hated reading. Exactly, which I'll, I'll leave it, but that's, yeah. that's what I was talking about when, I, when right. I referred to this study so many times in the past few weeks. So that brings us to our segment, planning for the unplanned. Um, so reading first failed because it did not allow the teachers to practice the art of being responsive to student needs. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, there's this science to so the skill of being flexible and responsive. It's really necessary. Mm -hmm. Right. And if we're, if we're really talking about the quality of instruction, the truth is the teacher really isn't winging it. Mm -hmm. um, that teacher spent a whole lot of time preparing and really considering each child's strengths and their needs and what looks like something um, that might be done on the fly is really a teacher who's very skilled at being responsive and flexible and can kind of take advantage of those teachable moments and, and yeah. Yes, that's why the winging it is a, in quotes there. Right. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing we've learned about education in the last 20, 20 years, it's that students need personalized education. So how does a teacher become notably excellent and comfortable with being responsive and flexible? Well, the research tells us that it really takes this careful planning and very, you know, deliberate decisions have to be made based on what the teacher knows about the students in their class. And that takes time. Right. So before the teacher even knows the students, they can go ahead and look at whatever data is available to them, um, which really tells a lot about the areas of strengths and possible gaps in background knowledge. And you can look at referrals, which offers insight into social emotional issues that kids might have. And you can go ahead and uh, find out what supports do the students already receive and figure out maybe what those kids might need. And from the first day, you know, the first weeks or so, the teacher can find out what the student's strengths and interests are. They can use a quick survey. They can do interviews. Um, and then as the lesson progresses, the teacher can gauge what direction to take a lesson by using and listening to that feedback from the students. So when the teacher closely monitors students, uh, he or she can help students make adjustments um, or ask questions to prompt students to think in the direction that's going to help them achieve the learning goal. Um, so let's say a student doesn't know which math operation to use to solve a multi-step problem. The teacher can ask the student to explain his or her thinking for each operation, which prompts the student to work through that process um, for all the options. Um, so it looks like they're, you know, winging it, but really the teacher is uh, crafting the situation where the student figures out what, what they need to do. Right. They're being that 
they're being, that's what responsive and flexibility is, right? They're integrating that personalized instruction for that's for what that's the students needs. And that's differentiation too. Yes. Right. Um, another thing that I think is really important is really openly practicing, you know, a growth mindset so that the students can kind of see how grit and perseverance look and, and really modeling that all the time. Um, for, for a teacher, this really means, you know, do what needs to be done so that each student, you know, can learn. It might take a whole lot of time and trying a lot of different angles, but it's clear to everybody that failure is a learning experience and the teacher's not going to give up here um, and just modeling that throughout. So I think the lesson here is that when teachers are responsive and flexible, it really means that they're adjusting to the learning process, um, the content or the time, and they're differentiating for their students. And that includes modeling a growth mindset. Uh, they're taking advantage of the moment to integrate that personalized instruction that we know from that field research at the beginning of the 2000s that we know that every child needs. So this brings us to our segment, Strategies That Get the W. Each time we like to send you off with a little goodie, a strategy that you can use now in your classroom. What have you got for us today? I really like the interactive read aloud. So this is really uh, kind of simple to, to do. The teacher reads aloud some text to the whole class uh, and you stop at pre-selected places for conversation. You can do this where the students um, talk as a whole class, they talk in pairs, and they talk in small groups, um, but this there's this exchange between the speaker and the listener. Um, and I really like it because it allows the readers to enjoy the text regardless of their level of reading. Mm -hmm. And it builds a community and it builds language skills. And the teacher can gather information from these conversations during the read aloud um, and then personalize instruction through mini lessons. So the interactive read aloud. 